Welcome back to another episode of Cobra Kai Companion. You guys, it's been a while since we've uh, done an interview on the podcast, but uh, um, we have two veterans here joining us uh, in the acting world uh, to talk about something outside of the Cobra Kai universe. But you guys know them as Homeless Lynn and uh, Sensei Kreese. Joining us, Susan Gallagher and Martin Cove. How are you two doing? Good. Great. Glad yeah. to be here. And hi, yeah. everybody. Yeah, well, thank you for fitting me in. I know you guys have been making the circuits, and um, what has the the festivals been like? The receptions. Wow, well, everybody. For a, a taste of love. Sorry, yeah. a taste of love. Love. Um, everybody has loved it. I mean, it, it's it's a beautifully shot, beautifully written and performed movie, and um, it's about love and food and cooking and family. And um, yeah, we had a great time doing it. Yeah, it's really it's really a um progression into, for me, to work with my son as a guest. Working with Susan was a lot of fun. She plays my wife and we play restaurant owners. And it's a story of love and food. And the characters is, you know, soft and gentle, quite contrast to John Kreese. And it's the reason why I took it, as well as to work with, you know, with my son. And it was great. This town of Dunedin was sensational. And, now, uh, marvelous because we just were at the film festival there, and uh, you get so much support from Florida to do a movie. You know, it's a great place to make a movie, especially Dunedin in the Clearwater area. I did a western up in Parrish, Florida. A lot of support there, you know. And uh, I think Florida is a great place to make a movie. You know, great place for film festivals. Absolutely. You have everything there, the, the weather, the people, the food, uh, the different cultures. Absolutely. Uh, the, a, a lot of our uh, you know, audience will have seen you guys as uh, uh, Homeless Lynn increased in season two of Cobra Kai. Uh, how did you two get attached to this particular project? You know, it was shooting in Florida and I'm based out of Florida and my agent, mm. um, the casting director, requested me to read for it. And um, I was put on hold for quite a while, and um, we heard that the L.A. casting director was wanting to cast a personal friend of hers and from L.A., and um, I was still on hold. I was the favorite in the Southeast. We were told that. So um, the casting director, Lori Wyman, and Tracy, Eberbar Talent, my agent, they were like, Susan, if you know anybody at all, you know, try to see if they can tilt you in the right direction. So I called Jason Lockhart at A&T, my Atlanta agent who knows Jesse and Marty personally. And I asked him if he would make a call for me to these guys to see if they could just throw in a good word for me. And he said, he'd be happy to. And the next thing I knew I was booked. So thank you, Marty and Jesse Cove and Jason Lockhart. Yeah, M Marty, are we gonna see you with a cigar in the movie at all? <laughs> you know, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. My daughter said to me one day, and I was never really aware of it, said to me when I, she was little, like five years ago, she said, you know, Daddy, why don't we see you in a movie without a cigar? And I, I never realized that, you know, even some of these independent movies, I, I, I just have a cigar. And it's interesting, you know, John Kreese in the opening scene of, you know, the real story has only just begun. One of my favorite scenes, if not my favorite. And they had given me cheap cigars then I, I was getting dizzy and I remember having to cut up my Cuban cigars you know and I hate cutting up the Cuban cigars for continuity purposes <laughs> that is a terrible thing to do <laughs> you know and but I had to do it and um it worked out great it was just a great entrance and all that but no this character is very vulnerable this character is a real family man cooks I let it all out. He wears these, not these shirts. He wears you know, like funky shirts, like, you know, short sleeve, you know, like my father used to wear with two pockets on this <laughs> side, you know. And um, he's very, I just let it all hang out for this guy. And he's very vulnerable and it's charming to do. And I like those roles. And there was, you know, some couple of scenes in there that were very, very emotional. And, uh, I made people cry. So it's kind of like, it was good to do. And I did it through a friend of mine 
and uh, he was a produ- he was the producer when I was moving. He says, "Come, come play." And I read the script, and I really liked it, and uh, I just went there and had a good time. And of uh, course, Eric. Jesse is the male lead and the romantic lead, um, so that was great too. For, and for me personally, to see the two of them uh, interact just as father and son, because he is a great dad. And uh, Jesse's a great son. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, both of you also have uh, daughters. The, the the film A Taste of Love stars Aaron Cahill. Um, it, 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 are you guys uh, pulling like from personal experience uh, in in the kind of family dynamic? Can you speak on the uh, on the family in the film? Well, yeah. Um, I mean, I I've always loved motherhood. It's it's been my greatest joy. So, and Erin is so adorable. She's beautiful inside and out. So that was easy, and the writing was good, and we had good chemistry right off the bat. You know, we had never really been around each other that much, even though we knew of each other through Cobra Kai. I had met him at a at a um, a screening out at South by Southwest. Was the first time I think um, season two was screening out there but you don't even remember it. So we had very little interaction. We, we kind of cross paths a little bit in, um, in one scene. And <laughs> he doesn't remember either, but I do. Um, so it was great fun to, to be able to work with him and to see how he really is in real life, which is, you know, a great dad and a great guy and very charming and he's a great actor. So um, I think it's gonna be great for, I, I'm just happy to, that the world and Cobra Kai especially get to see what a great actor he really is and and how charming and vulnerable he can be. Well, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, so, so the both of you, metaphorically speaking, hang up the the gi for aprons, um, you know, as uh, parents who own restaurants. Did you guys uh, have to do any sort of uh, training for the cooking sequences? Marty, I saw a picture with you uh, just covered in flour, I think, was it? It was whipped cream. Whipped cream, yeah, okay. Pretty funny, you yeah. know. Yeah. It's a very funny scene. Yeah, but we had to do some cooking. We had, you know, I, I'm in the kitchen, she handles the restaurant. And I had to learn how to really, you know, work with the knife because, you know, the knife can dice, cut. It's all kinds of things you can do that, you know, chefs handle. And I learned about sauces and I learned about seasonings and all the things I really liked to participate in in my own kitchen you know, but don't usually have the patience. And uh, it was great. I learned a lot about you know, about food and about uh, the amount of time one cooks. I'm, I'm very big on omelets and a variety of omelets. And um, I learned a lot about that, some, something as simple as that. And um, it was just, it was precious. I, I think I gained five pounds in this movie, you know, but it was great that we had good technical advisors and, the writers were, you know, were chefs and it was terrific. It was just really, really, you know, it was a terrific experience to work with friends and, and work with Susan and and absolutely come away with working with something that's so, the character is so far from what's popular in my career right now. You know, the Westerns I've been doing and the Prodigal Son, this cow, comic book, which is ultimately, you know, can be a series. And um, it was quite a departure. And I'm so glad it turned out good because um, some of these soft movies can be boring, you know, and yet that one is really good. It's charming. Everybody's performance works. And it's not, it's not too soft, you know. Now, uh, Marty, uh, with, with Jesse being, um, you know, the the other lead opposite of uh, Aaron, do you, uh, as a dad, are you giving Jesse uh, any kind of pointers? Or are you just kind of letting him kind of breathe into his own craft? Are you giving him any tips and advice out there? Well, you know, he's improved so much and using his own instrument, and, you know, where... Early on, years ago, I would like to help him in auditions, and I, I don't anymore. He's got it, you know. He's got it. He uses himself, and we just did a western together in Parish, Florida, and he plays the lead. And he makes a deal with the devil, and um, he's great. He has to deal with a variety of characters, 
as the lead in this piece, and he's good. He's really good. I watched, you know, I watched some of the the, the footage, and um, he's he's really good. But there are times where he's not getting the right direction, or he's not doing something, and I will, you know, pull him aside and say, "Try this, try this," you know. And uh, but he's way further down the line of using himself than I was. Yeah, you know, I always use the adage, you know, I was trying to be Steve McQueen the first 25 years of my career, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I didn't know it's okay to be Marty Cove until probably 20 years ago, you know, and I'm in mm -hmm. business. So it's like, you know, he uses himself right now, you know, and uh, it's invaluable because the more you can tap into your emotions, the more emotions you find and deeper and deeper you go, you know, there's so many actors that I wonder how they get down so deep and come up with an interpretation of how are you or, you know, any, any dialogue whatsoever. It, it's always intrigued me. I remember an actor named Bill Pullman and Bill Pullman always got he went down so deep for the simplest bit of dialogue and it was always so realistic. Like Brando, you know, Brando, you know, have these lines, you know, you need that, you need that. You know, wherever he pulled from was so rich and deep that he was fascinating. And yet, with some of these actors, you don't even have to understand the words because they're so interesting to watch. And I find that Jesse will get to that point. He really will. Yeah. Uh, Susan, uh, this uh, character of yours, uh, did you pull any inspirations from um, uh, any influence of yours? Or are you kind of just doing like a, an original take on someone different? Well, I certainly didn't pull from uh, Homeless Land for this character. <laughs> I had to pull the opposite. Um, but, you know, I, I love motherhood and, and Erin is so beautiful that it was very easy to to slip into that role as her mother. And he's so easy and we've got such great chemistry that, you know, it just felt right. And same with Jesse. Um, so there was a, you know, there was just a really loving energy amongst the cast and the crew and everybody was just so happy to be, I think, working because of what we've gone through with COVID and was happy to be there. And of course, Florida is my home state. So it was nice to, to be able to work in Florida and Dunedin and the people of that community just opened their arms and welcomed us and supported us. And uh, it was just, it was lovely. And the cinematography is beautiful. Um, it's a waterfront community and a uh, very charming backdrop for this Hallmark movie that airs on Monday at eight o'clock on the Hallmark Channel, Eastern Standard Time. That's correct. Um, is there anything that you guys like learned or any surprises uh, working closely together as a married couple? <laughs> well, I don't know. You can answer it. You answer it. <laughs> that sounds like, it sounds like a married couple. Discovered as a married Surprise couple. That, that surprised us. Um, I, I, I think I was a little bit surprised at, at um, how easy it was to, to work with him and, um, you know, to, to, we had fun and to see that really charming side. I think I, I was a well, little bit surprised. Well, Susan at the beginning was, was apprehensive about just improvising and being silly, you know, and I, um, I wanted to play the character lighter and char light and charming. And have fun like a like like a dad would with his daughter who he hasn't seen in a long time. And we had some you know funny moments where I'm putting on being sick and all, and I'm not really sick. I just don't want to do certain work. And we were able to play. And and I think you know, like any two actors, you discuss the situation, and you know, you we didn't get a lot of time to rehearse scenes, so a lot of the the activity between married couples is between the lines in the script, you know, unless you have a lot of time to rehearse. And we didn't have a lot of time to rehearse, so we had to we had to create a lot of the fooling around and 
familiarities that these two people would have with each other being married for you know 20 25 years so that was interesting because it wasn't set up and we had to create that in between the lines as actions you know sort of you know as if she knows some of my idiosyncrasies but she really doesn't and i know some of hers because we didn't have time to really rehearse those so it's fun to just be free enough to improvise and play with that. And that was exciting. That was really a lot of fun, you know, a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't wait to see it uh, just because, you know, I mean, we, we, we all go back, you know, over five years uh, with, with uh, season uh, one of Cobra Kai. So, um, yeah, I can't wait to see you guys uh, in a different role, but, but also more screen time together rather than just the one in season two of Cobra Kai. Um, as uh, we get ready to wrap up, uh, if you can speak on uh, if, if there's like any s talks of a sequel for A Taste of Love, but also coming from the Cobra Kai fandom and um, that show being in its uh, production for its final season, anything you'd like to share or s say to the fans um, that have been along for the ride this whole time? Oh, well, I, I would. I would. I want to thank you, Peter for your support of me and Homeless Lynn all of these years and, and to everybody. It's just been a wonderful ride. It's been a blessing for me. And it's so liberating to play a filthy, disgusting character like Lynn. And um, I'm just real grateful for it. Yeah, I don't think of this as end, the end. I remember doing Cagney and Lacey after six seasons, we ended up doing three movies of the week, you know? so. And I'm in the throes of it all. And this has been, you know, we were shooting in 12 degree weather. So this has been far the most difficult season so far. And there's so many surprises and so many wild anecdotes and morals and activities that are so different than the other five seasons. So, you know, it, it's, you know, I get a chance to do some of the things I've wanted to do for a while. And um, it's exciting. I don't think of it as the terminal situation because there's so many more exciting things going on, you know, episode by episode, because the whole season is so full of surprises. There's so many unorthodox things going on with Cobra Kai compared to the previous seasons. So everybody is going to have a great time, you know, watching this the show. And they're pulling out all the stops, you know. So... It'll be fun, you know, endless amount of action, endless. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> you're here and, you know, you just try to stay with it and have a good time and keep everything fresh. I think my, my uh, image for this season is what John Wayne did in a movie called The Searchers, directed by John Ford. And... His character's name was Ethan Edwards, and I'm emulating Ethan Edwards in these episodes, you know. Um, and it's, it's very interesting to use him as an image for me, you know. So, well, um, yeah, looking forward to it, obviously. Uh, when, when I was on Kick It with the Coves, I asked you about the uh, one word to describe season five. Thus far, are you able to describe season six in one word? Mayhem. Okay. <laughs> Buckle up, baby. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> Indeed. It's been great. It's so wonderful to see you. And um, let's stay in touch. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely.